What's up guys? Now, while we were actually doing a bit of a remodel or at least move around in the studio, we actually came across this CPU. It was one that I'd forgotten that we'd actually got. And I know a lot of you won't recognize it, but you should be familiar with its work. This is the old CPU from our editing rig, which means if you've been watching our videos, anything slightly older than a year ago was actually edited on this one. This was the first CPU that I actually purchased pretty much for the studio itself in terms of equipment and it did us really really well. It is an AMD Ryzen 7 1700 and it was the CPU that gave birth to the saying Intel got Ryzen. This was one of their very first generations and I thought while we had it out we should just slap it into a system, give it a bit of a benchmark and see how well it's actually holding up today. So for those of you that don't keep up to date with these things, this was one of the first generation Ryzen processors. It is the Ryzen 7 1700 and it did give birth to the saying, Intel got Ryzen. Before the Ryzen era, AMD was actually messing around with uh, the FX chips and they were okay. They were pretty good budget chips, but they can never quite keep up with Intel when it came to performance. But then Ryzen dropped and everything changed. Today is a really big day for AMD. And actually it's a really big day for all PC gamers and content creators and everybody who loves high performance processors. Today is all about Ryzen. Ryzen not only gave a true alternative to the Intel processors at the time for gamers, but also for those who do productivity things. And this CPU would have been the one that they chose. It was the flagship at the time, one of the first actually released. It boasts an eight core processor with 16 threads, a base clock speed of 3.0 gigahertz and a boost clock speed of 3.7. And it was built obviously on the very first Zen architecture. Now, even when I picked this CPU up, it was actually pretty old, but I was quite surprised at how well it really did perform. It was sitting in our editing rig for a long time, pretty much doing all of our editing and I couldn't really bring myself to get rid of it so it kind of got shoved at the back of a shelf and I found it when we were started to do a bit of a clean up in the studio. As we know since this CPU was released there's been many different uh, versions and generations of Ryzen and they have actually progressively got a lot better as it's gone along. But can the first generation really stand up today? Well to find that out we obviously needed to do some benchmarking. In the first benchmarks we did were a few synthetics using Cinebench. If we take a look at some of the results that we got using Cinebench in a single core test, we can see that the Ryzen 7 1700 doesn't really stand up that well, particularly when it comes to newer generations. And that's from either Intel or AMD themselves. It actually gets completely smashed by the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a lower tier CPU. And then when we actually go up to something like the Ryzen 5 5600X, we can clearly see that AMD have made a lot of progress when it comes to their Ryzen processors. But for those of you that are sitting on an FX platform, you can see that you're going to get a pretty decent uplift if you can pick up one of these pretty cheap. Moving on to the multi-core benchmarks, this is where this CPU should actually shine if it's going to shine anywhere. And as we can see, due to the older architecture, it's not performing as well as that you would like. It is pretty much on par with a very basic Core i5-10400F when it comes to multi-core with the uh, i5 just slightly getting ahead. And comparing it to anything Ryzen based, you can see that there's been huge improvements even in the multi-core processing. The CPU that we actually swapped out for this one was the Ryzen 7 3800X and that's the one that we upgraded to in our editing rig. And you can clearly see that we had a great big uplift when we did that. But again, if you are on an FX platform, it would make a great upgrade path for you even today because you're going to be getting double the kind of scoring when it comes to those kind of benchmarks. But with synthetic productivity benchmarks aside, can the CPU actually keep up when it comes to gaming? Well, to find that out, obviously we needed to do some benchmarking and that's exactly what we did. We dropped this into our test bench and we gave it a test against our standard test suite. So let's take a look at those benchmarks.
Now for the benchmarking we did, we actually did two resolutions, 1080p and 1440p. What is not important in this is actually the 1440p resolution. And that is because once we started testing that, the CPU load actually decreases because it goes more onto the graphics card. And the graphics card we used for this was of course the RX 6600. Now it's not the most powerful graphics card out there, but for an older CPU like this, it's worth using something like that just to see how well this kind of really does stand up. When we take a look at the 1080p results, we can see that in Back for Blood, we got an average of 104 FPS, although we kind of suffered when it came to the 1% low, getting an average of 55. That is about half the way, but it still means that the game is more than playable. Cyberpunk 2077 was pretty much held back by both the CPU and the GPU, but we managed to get an average of 54 frames per second with a 1% low of 34. Again, the game is reasonably playable, particularly for this kind of level of hardware. Doom Eternal shot right up the chart, and as we can see, the 1% lows were fantastic on this one, getting an average frame rate of 183 with a 1% low of 139. So. The CPU could clearly keep up there, getting us pretty decent 1% lows. God of War was quite usually testing, no matter what we actually tried to use on it, but we did manage to get an average FPS of 71, with a 1% low of 43, and there was no major stuttering in this game, so I was actually quite impressed that the CPU held up. We have used newer CPUs in the past, which actually do struggle when it comes to those 1% lows, but the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 really did manage to keep up. Red Dead Redemption 2 got some fantastic results here. We're getting an average of 78 frames per second with a 1% low of 62. That's pretty decent, means the game is more than playable. And again, if you can actually pick this stuff up pretty cheap, you're going to be getting a decent experience there. We saw the same in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, getting an average of 100 frames per second and a 1% low of 62. Now, obviously that is a lot less than the 100, but 62 frames per second on your lows will give you a pretty decent playing experience, so that looks pretty good. The last game in our test suite was of course Spider-Man Remastered, where we got an average of 80 frames per second and a 1% low of 44. This game, just like God of War, sometimes does have odd stuttering when we're using even newer CPUs, but slightly weaker. But in this game, there was no stuttering at all. The game was pretty smooth. It would have been nice to see a little bit higher than the 44, but this is where the CPU really started to show its age. When we have a look at the 1440p results, we can see that not a lot really changes when it starts to come to those 1% lows, which kind of shows us the CPU is really the issue here. But because all of the load is actually pushed onto the graphics card, we do get some better average frame rates. We're not too concerned about the 1440p results really, because we know that this CPU can pretty much keep up as long as you've got a graphics card that is capable of actually playing the games decently. So for a CPU that was released in 2017, it's pretty old now, it's a first generation. We've had the second generation, the third generation, the fifth generation, and we're completely on a new platform now. This CPU holds up really well. And if you can get it cheap enough, it can actually be a pretty decent choice. Should you go out and look for a first generation Ryzen processor? Probably not. You can get some amazing bargains at the moment on 3000 series and 5000 series, but if you can get one cheap enough, maybe it's included in a pre-built system that you're already gonna purchase, or maybe somebody is just pretty much giving it away, because these do go, pretty cheap if you can find them in your local adverts, it would make a fantastic or a fine CPU to do a bit of light gaming. Now the CPU is not as impressive as I remember, but clearly things have moved on. And I think I'm gonna keep it around for a while because it makes a great CPU for even testing motherboards and doing things like that. But let me know in the comments below, do you still have a first generation Ryzen processor? Is it still doing everything that you want it to? And if not, what are you thinking about upgrading to? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see more because we've got plenty of content coming. And I'm sure as always, we'll catch you in the next one.